Today we're gonna have a look on how you can create your own UI inside UEFN without using words whatsoever. You can create custom buttons, custom images and align them however you want. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first thing we have to do is obviously create a UI element first, which then we can use inside Fortnite. How we can do this is by going down to the content browser and next thing we have to do is click in our little content browser. You can see that I already made one here. Um, but we're just going to right click in here and we're going to select the user interface widget here. Um, so we create a widget blueprint. Here on there's uh, two important things that we have to consider. The first one is if you just want to use a normal widget which doesn't have any interactable. So if you just want to use um, anything that just pops up on the screen, you can use the first one. If you ever want to use one that has a button or anything that, like that, you can use the second one. These two also are different in the devices you use them in. The first one right here is for the hot message device. So you can see this right here, I already created one. And the second one is for the pop-up dialogue device. Um, which obviously has the options to have custom buttons. If we click on the hot message device and then we go to the advanced tab over here, you might have to scroll that down, um, we can see that we have the option for hot widgets. And in here we can basically put in whatever widget we created, there's also some default ones. On the other hand, we have the interactable one, which does allow us to give the options of buttons and multiple other options, but this one only allows the type module dialogue variant. So you can see down here that we have the module widget here, and we can put one in here, but we do not have really one yet. We have one that I made for the tutorial, obviously. So we have to go in here, click on the user interface, widget blueprint, and then we select this one over here. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna name this test. In here, it basically works the same as with the normal HUD, so this is basically the same process. The first thing which is super important when creating a UI is that you have a panel first. You can use the canvas panel, uh, for the normal hut. This one is technically the easiest one to understand. Whatever you put inside of here basically will be shown inside your UI. You can scale them up and down by just clicking this little button here. So if you want to have full HD, you can drag that down here. The important thing though for the pop-up dialogue device is if you want to have buttons in there, you cannot use this one. I'm not exactly sure what the reason for this is, but every time you use this, it will give you an error. So you have to drag out any of the other ones. It doesn't really matter. It also, also depends on what you want to create. So in our case, we just use a normal grid panel here, make sure that we scale it up to full HD. And now we can start putting in our cool stuff here. All right, so the first thing I wanna put in our UI is just a normal image of a gun. For that, we can just click on our images that we want. So in our case, we're gonna look for any Fortnite weapon. Let's use the scar. We just put it in here and we can just drag and drop it inside of here. And now you can see it popped up this little thing here. This is a grid panel, so it will obviously align everything in a grid. Uh, we can obviously change that. So you can see right here, this is a very small image of the scar. And if we go down to our appearance, go to the scar, and then we can, for example, make this full HD. So we go 9, 1920 by 1080. Now we have a giant scar on our screen, and this will basically be shown like this in the game. Um, maybe we do not want it as big as this one. So we're just gonna... All right, so I just scaled it down a little bit, as you can see right here. Um, but now you have noticed that we cannot just drag this around, right? We can click on this thing here, nothing will really happen, and that is because this is a grid panel. Um, you cannot just freely move it around like you would be able to do in the canvas panel. You have to actually use the um, transform options over here. So we can basically go here and then use the translation to basically drag it, maybe a little bit in the middle, maybe a little bit down. And now we have a giant scar on our screen. But it doesn't really do anything yet. All right, so let's say we want to have this picture on our screen and then we want to press a button and then we get that picture. So we get the scar in game. So we can use the variety of a few buttons here. We have the loud, quiet, and regular. All right, so if we quickly drag them in here, you can see that this one is obviously the blue one. This one is the like transparent one and the um, loud one is the yellow one. It's pretty important to say that you cannot change the style of these, uh, which is kind of unfortunate, but we have to live with it for now. Probably in the future, we'll get more options for that. Um, but in our case, we want to use the quiet one so we can delete these two here and uh, quickly let them go. But as you can see, these are also in the grid, right? We can just like click this, but nothing really works. So we need to make sure that we use the render transform tab over here as well. So we can give our button even a little bit of text. So if we go down to the content tab here, we can type in a scar and then let's say in the secondary test, press to get. And now you can see we have a little button here which says scar press to get. All right, and now we press on our pop-up dialog device, go under the template override, and then make sure that we have our test in here. And we can yet again save all of these, make sure that everything is nice. 
But before we can actually get the scar and make the button work, we have to do a few more things. The first thing we have to do is make sure that we actually see our UI that we just created at some point in the game. So you can obviously link this up to any special event or you can just have it to game start. So in our case, we're just gonna link it up to our game start. So go to auto display and then game start. So it will show immediately when we start the game, it will show up the pop-up. But if we would start the game right now, it would just show up and we could click the button, but it wouldn't do anything because we haven't linked up anything to it yet. All right, the next thing we have to do is actually link the button up to something that we want to achieve. In our case, we want to get a scar. For that, we can use the item grantor. So make sure that you look for the item grantor, pull it out, um, and this will give a player a weapon if you link them properly. Click on item list, and we I think it's called assault rifle. So we're gonna look up assault rifle here, and we're gonna put it in, and now we get one assault rifle. Now we have to make sure that these two devices are linked up together. So go to the item grant, um, click on a little uh, plus icon here. Then we look up for the pop-up dialog device. This one is the second one in our case. And then we can click on the button that says none right here. And we can see a bunch of options. We want to have response button one in our case because we only have one button yet. Um, and that should be good to go for this one. All right, don't start your game yet because as you can see, if we start the game in uh, our case here, we can see everything works fine. We get our giant scar with the button, which we can actually press on, but if we press the button, nothing happens. And the reason for that is because we didn't link up the button in our UI. Back to UFN, we're gonna click on our little test here and we're gonna click on our button. Now we just have to make sure that our button is actually linked up and can be pressed uh, and can be used with the pop-up dialog device. We can do this by clicking on the view binding tab over here. And if we click on this, we will see that we get greeted with the this editor requires a view model. So we're just gonna create a view model. And in here, you're just gonna click on the second one. There's only one, so we, we do not really have a big choice here. Just press select and we can close this out. Click on the view bindings again. And now you can see that we have the option to add a widget. We're gonna press that and in here, we're gonna select our button, obviously. Press select. And the first thing we have to do is change this little arrow to the one way to view model size. This will then allow us to click into this field here um, at the conversion functions. And then we can click on the get responding button one. So if you want to have on button two, button three, whatever, you have to select obviously the other ones here. And then we can leave the arrow. We're gonna select the create view model dialog here. Click response select and now in here we can go and select the button click event and select and if we set this up correctly and we can press compile and save obviously we have to push changes first so make sure that you save your changes push them and now if we start the game you can see everything loads up perfectly fine and we get our scar we get the button get the scar and we can press scar and we get our scar in our inventory and you can obviously go as creative as you want. For example, I gave myself a little single remote control, um, which we can press and open up our like selection wheel for our guns. So you can see if we press, we get all of our guns, we can select them. So I can select the pistol. Maybe I also want the sniper. We can select the sniper and now we have these. And if you know how to do it, it's actually really easy to do and super simple to replicate. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys back in the next one. Bye.